Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kim Stevens. I'm Ted Hall. Welcome to Live at Five. We're live at Claiborne Farm, just east of Lexington, Kentucky. We're near a small town called Paris in Bourbon County, where, by the way, they, the name Bourbon Whiskey came from this county. Makes sense. A bunch of famous stuff here. But uh, we're here for Live at Five, and we're expecting some nifty stuff. Definitely. Chances are that Saturday's winner claim came from Claiborne Farm. For the Kentucky Derby? That's right. Will. 89... Uh, 89 of the last 118 Derby winners were Kentucky bred. Wow. During the next half hour, we'll show you how it all starts at farms like this. We'll show you a foal taking its first steps. An expectant mother gets a visit from the vet. And we'll show you the life of a stallion. Or a stud. A rough life. But first, <laughs> we just want to introduce you to Claiborne Farm. The sun doesn't cue the start of the day here. By sunrise, work's already happening. These animals don't know what time it is, really. They know it's feed time. It's the same way why, why work on weekends and why work on holidays. To work with thoroughbreds, you've got to dedicate yourself and you've got to give up something. You give up free time. Work's important here, and it's paid off. This is Ferdinand. He won the 1986 Kentucky Derby. The purpose of this farm is to raise top-class racehorses. Triple Crown winner Secretariat was a stud here for years. Kentucky Derby second place finisher, 49er, is a lifer here. And I think right now we're probably considered the oldest, largest, most successful thoroughbred nursery in the business. They didn't rise to the top by pinching pennies. This farm is bigger than many Kentucky towns. There's 32 homes uh, for, for employees and three large homes for the Hancock family themselves. Wow, all on the grounds. All on the grounds. The farm has 130 employees, 43 vehicles, 40 barns, 30 miles of road, 100 miles of fence. It costs $5 million a year to run Claiborne Farms. They'll bring in between 8 and $15 million a year. Depends on how many races they win. And that is the biggest thrill of all, when the farm raises a winner, like Swale in 1984. Other than my grandchildren and my children being born, it's the greatest thrill of my life. I laughed, I cried. I thought it was Mary Poppins. I thought I could, I thought I could just fly off into ever Everland. I guess that's the goal. I mean, the Derby means everybody wants to win the Derby. Is every one of these horses bred to win the Derby. That was a goal in mind when the mating was done. I, but you only get one Derby winner a year. Hmm. And this year they think they're uh, they've got a chance of having somebody win the Derby. They've got eight horses that they're at least partially responsible for in the Derby, and we'll have more on that for you in a couple minutes. That's exciting. Aside from the money that they get from racing, it takes just a split second for them to make a lot of money here. We're going to show you about the breeding when we come back. That, yeah, amazing how much it costs to, to, to bring a mare in mm -hmm. for a foal for next year. Also, how'd you like to be responsible for a horse, welfare, his life, if the horse is worth a million bucks or more? We'll show you the guy who is in just a minute as well. <laughs> Isn't it just gorgeous out here? Oh, it feels so wonderful. We've got uh, water behind us, uh, cows, the cows. <laughs> cows, along with the horses, swans. They say it's one of the leading uh, horse farms in the world. They, 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 they take that claim and they're mm -hmm. proud of it. They've also got eight, they got more cows here than they have horses. They have 800 head of cows. One of the, they have a couple of reasons. One is to make money. Certainly, and it also cuts down on what bacteria and parasites bacteria out here. Bacteria and parasites in the, in the grass. Field. They can't. They can't get enough horses out here to take mm -hmm. care of this grass. So they have all these cows out here to eat the grass. They take care of the, the long grass. The horses <laughs> eat the short stuff. So Everything makes everywhere. sense. It's beautiful. It works sure, even fine. Even two ducks. And it all makes money. Well, you said all around the world, Claiborne Farms is known all around the world. People from all around the world come here and bring their horses to be bred right here. It's big business. It is the big business of breeding. Teasing begins at daybreak to get the mares ready. And they come from all over Winchester. And we do get the imported mares in. It's like mares coming from Ireland, France, England. Then they're cleaned. They can pass diseases just like humans. It's basically uh, sterilization, more or less. Their tails are wrapped, and they wait for the big moment. Our goal in there 
is to breed as many mares as possible to a stallion on as few covers as possible without getting any horses hurt or getting any people hurt. The stallions breed seven days a week. They go three times a day sometimes. But only once on Sundays. They're, they're well taken care of. Basically. But but they got a job to do too. And they, they got here on their merits at the racetrack and on their pedigree. Mm -hmm. But then how they get to stay here is determined by what their progeny does at the racetrack. <laughs> And that job is taken very seriously. It may be a blind date to the horses, but not the breeders. And people spend a lifetime studying pedigrees mm -hmm. to know what lines cross and also what type of horses you can breed to, you type to type and mm -hmm. how you breed out confirmation defects and not double up on a defect. There's a whole lot that goes into it. This is no free dating service. One special moment with a stallion can run between $5,000 and $175,000, depending on the stallion's lineage. Danzig, during his racing career, he only won 36000 in his own sale. He started three times, and he won all three times. But uh, he's been a sire of sires, and a sire of broodmares. I mean, you can't hardly beat him. He's a top broodmare sire. An old horseman will tell you, you breed the best to the best and hope for the best. <laughs> There's a lot of hope, and there's a lot of luck, they say, that goes into yeah. this. You yeah. never know. Kind of interesting about the money these things pull in. Uh, Danzig, $175,000 for each time he breeds. Mm -hmm. Now, he only won, what, he, they were saying three races. And That's Ferdinand, right. the Kentucky Derby winner, is only costing $15,000 now. Because of, because of the offspring. Just because the offspring has not won. Has any. not won, yeah, okay. but he has a chance in the race tomorrow. Well, we'll no, we'll... Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. Well, Friday, Friday. The next day after that is Saturday. And who am I? <laughs> uh, I don't think we should get into that. That'll take forever. Okay. Okay. That was amazing. Right. The, the it's a, it is incredible. Yeah. And they just they prance around. There is so much show and tell going on around here at Claiborne Farms, and you can see the pride coming from the people that work here, that own the farms, and of course also the horses. And you can see it in their eyes as they're walking around and they're they're tra they're traipsing around in front of people. There are a lot of people that come to Claiborne Farms to just look around and to look at the horses, to look at the studs and um, to see what they're all about. You can see them. there was a big group that came today. Uh, it's one of many groups that came through uh, Claiborne Farms today that come through actually all year round. Executives and breeders also come to check out the stallions. All 18 stallions come with a winning story, who its parents were, what races it won. Some have earned more than $4 million in a race. Others are worth even more, just like we said before, solely because of their lineage. The lineage of the farm right now is, is I mean, they're very proud of, of some of the youngsters they have mm -hmm. out there running around the tracks. Take a look at this now. These are horses running in the Kentucky Derby itself that Claiborne Farm claims some credit for. Either their, their sire, which is their daddy, or their mama, or their grandpa or grandma are on this farm right now. And they are full in the heather, which is Ferdinand's first real try at getting a winner. Ferdinand, the Kentucky Derby winner mm -hmm. a, a few years back, has a real shot with Bull in the Heather. There's Diazzo and Kim, this one. Uh, Michiello. Exactly. Dixieland Heat, Prairie Bayou, Sea Hero, Union City, and Walenda, all with lines mm -hmm. to the farm. I saw Prairie Bayou and Keeneland a couple weeks ago. Did you? Mm-hmm. Did, didn't do very well is that day. Is he the day. favorite in this thing? <laughs> yes, I've been told that he's the favorite, but uh, Bull in the Heather is, a, I think, a close second. Got my, uh, that's my favorite name. You like, like the Bull name? Yeah, okay. We'll find out more about favorites and stuff when we when we go to Louisville tomorrow and, and uh, the track itself, uh, okay. Churchill Downs. There's a guy, one veterinarian, it's his full-time job to be the veterinarian here for the park mm -hmm. in charge of almost 600 horses, some of them worth millions of dollars. I asked him today if there's any pressure in dealing with horses worth that much money. You know, you got so many of them that uh, uh, you just uh, treat them all alike, so you don't have any problems. You, you, you just uh, you don't think about all the zeros involved, and they can't. You know, yeah. couldn't function if you did. Tell me the truth, Doc. Now, the artificial insemination is not a part of uh, of the breeding process here. It's the old-fashioned way, but they are moving ahead in some other ways. This is an ultrasound that they were performing today on some of the mares to see if she's pregnant. She was bred 20 days ago. The veterinarian, uh, Walter Kaufman, put the ultrasound to her today, found out she does have a baby. They say she's pregnant. Oh, that's she's great. She have a baby. Even even the, the, the horse experts call them babies, so huh. we're not okay, good. quite as dumb as we okay. sound. You know what I thought was so interesting is that they, they go in to test or to check the ovaries and to make sure that they're close to ovulating, 
and then uh, they go in and breed, and then they go in and they continuously check to make sure if it took, if it didn't take, they go in again and again and again. And I think they've got five tries for whatever the, the price is. It's kind of, it's really something. The whole purpose of this place being here is to, is to <laughs> breed other, is to breed horses. Breed horses. So it horses. surprised me. It's incredible, and we find out as Live at Five continues here that you're never too young to think racing and never too young to think winning. talking tours a little earlier in the show and one of the biggest draws has always been Secretariat but of course that horse died a, a, in 1989 he had a disease of the hoof I'm told and he died at the age of 19 he had to be put to sleep but even though Secretariat is no longer here his grave is Ted brings us there Kim Secretariat still a uh a tourist attraction, even though Secretariat's dead and buried right over here near the main office of Claiborne Farms. This is Bobby Anderson. You you helped with the horse during his time here. Yes, I groomed him for 10 years. Did you get attached to him? Oh, yes. He's quite a, he's quite some kind of thoroughbred. What kind of horse was he? Oh, he was a real he was a real ham. He had a great personality, probably one of the best personalities of any horse in the world. He felt like he was a big king. Did he get treated like a king? Is that why? Oh, yes. We treated him like a king, and all the tourists treated him like a king because everybody got out down here wanting to see him. I understand that uh, before he died, when he was alive, living here in Stud, you would have to line people up, schedule the tourists, because the demand to see him was so great. That's the reason they set up appointment or pass only out here at the front gate. When he come in, there were so many people wanting to see him. And now, people are, are still bringing him flowers, you can see right here. Who, who brings flowers to Secretary? Well, that, that, that's his real fans, the people bring them here to send to him. Just uh, anybody coming in that, that appreciates him and his, his past and well, Triple Crown? A lot of times, we, we really don't know. They send him on his birthday, send him birthday cards, especially on Derby Day. There'll be a bunch of people send flowers to him. What was it like uh, around here when Secretary died? Oh, it was a great, it was a great, a bad feeling towards everyone. Everybody cried and moaned over it. For quite a while? It was quite a, about quite a sad month, really. Most of the time when they, when they bury horses, they just bury some of the vital organs. But with Secretary, because Secretary was such a special horse, they buried the entire thing. Uh, was Secretary the greatest horse ever, Bobby? I think he was. They compare him to Man of War, but I still believe he's the greatest resource of all times. Bobby, thank you very much. We sure appreciate your time. Yes, Thanks, Kim. It's still incredible to me that no horse has ever beat Secretary at the time. You never know. It might happen on Saturday. Well, this is a really busy time. Let's forget about the Kentucky Derby for just one second and take a look at the new, the very new Derby hopefuls. This little guy was just born yesterday. Unlike Ted, of course. Every day, until he's weaned from his mama, he'll come out here to the paddock and learn how to walk, run, basically become uh, more independent. Uh, everyone here says that there's really no way to judge if a foal is going to be a winner until they're old enough to get out on the field and really show their stuff. By the way, a few foals were born last night. Three, many more are expecting any moment now. Fourteen, as a matter of fact, are expecting any moment now. And actually, the mares are, are overdue. So you never know, something could happen pretty quick. Now, once the foals reach about a year old, they're called yearlings. That's like the kids on the farm. To the Derby the first Saturday in May, you not only got to be good, you got to be very lucky. Huh. Very lucky. There are eight barns of yearlings here. That's 129 total. The ratio of Philly to Colt is just about equal, girls to boys. Uh, here they're broken, they're taught the habits of a race horse, so hopefully they don't, they don't learn any bad habits. They also learn to be comfortable around humans. And Claiborne Farm keeps about 20% of the yearlings that are born here. Something kind of, I, I found kind of interesting is they, they take the yearlings and put them away from the rest of the horses because the yearlings have a, some sort of a nasal, Gus, is it a nasal disease that the yearlings get? And they can spread, it doesn't hurt the yearlings, but they can spread to the bigger horses. Yeah. Oh, and they get a they runny get nose. The snots. Yeah. <laughs> they get a, they get a runny nose kind of a deal, and, and it can it can hurt the other horses and cause abortion. A virus. Wow. A virus. So they, they they separate the yearlings from the rest. It, it, it all it all works out great mm -hmm. because they treat them a little bit differently as well. But they, they keep them separated. And they have fun. John was just telling us that it's like kids. Really, they go out 
and they go run around and you can tell the boys from the girls really because they go out and they fight and they bite each other and the girls go out and they're just, you know they seem all excited to get out of there a little i saw dogs. the basketball over there i wonder <laughs> that's what they're doing in the dog for yeah. Yeah. responsible for all the beautiful trees they have here responsible for mowing the lawn they you know they hire about 130 people so there are all kinds of jobs for these people to do they have their mechanical staff here they have maintenance staff they have a, a, a blacksmith, of course. That's that's a more natural job. Here's what he does. This is Wick Stone. Actually, he's the farrier here. He'll go around and trim 600, well, times four, on all the normal horses. That's 2,400 feet. Who's? That's what he, he goes around, and each day he'll knock out enough so that by the end of the month he's completed everybody. The very next day at work, he has to go back to it again. So his, his job doesn't change too much from day to day. Uh, Kim... Is, is, is running around now where the, where the stallions are getting a special treat, the equivalent to us splashing on some high karate and brushing our teeth before the big date. Kim? Okay, Ted, if we want to find out about grooming these horses, we should talk to the guy who knows, Secretariat's groom, Bobby Anderson. Bobby, what are you doing here? Just uh, spraying them down with water? I mean, giving you a fresh shower to kind of get the dirt, dust and sweat out of him a little bit because he might get him right he don't get him right this afternoon but he might get one in the morning so they got to look good if they're going to breed they're kind of you got to clean them up and make them look good for the girlfriends <laughs> this is a horse called old guy jim all right now you just water them down don't you use any shampoo and stuff like that no we very seldom use any shampoo we just give them a shower out of the bath out of this hose here to get the dust and the dirt off of them do they get one every day not not every day no just most of when they're real dusty what was it like grooming Secretariat for all those years? Oh, it was really great. You got the greatest thoroughbred. It really has to feel great to groom something like that, which he had the greatest personality of any, any stallion in the world. I heard he had a bit of an attitude, too. Oh, he had, <laughs> he had a great personality. And he, he'd bring him out to show him for people. He would pose like a, he was a big king. Mm -hmm. Or he had up sideways and look all across the country and look at the people. Mm-hmm. Kim, thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching Live at 5 from Claiborne Farms. Tomorrow, live at Churchill Downs, the big one. Thanks a lot.